Hey, welcome to the Strong Roots Podcast. My name is Kristen Hill, and we are so excited that you're tuning in today. Our prayer is that you would move one step closer to Jesus through this series. So go ahead and check out this next episode. Welcome back to the Strong Roots Podcast. We are in our purpose season, and today we're talking about worship and how you were planned for God's pleasure. And I'm here with Pastor John again. And first off, I think a lot of people don't know what worship even means. Would you take a second to define that for us? Yeah, I think um, I think worship means loving God and uh, at its core, you know, I think a lot of times people confuse worship with singing only. And that's definitely not, there are um, very few biblical examples of people singing to God. I mean, there are some David examples in the book of Psalms and whatnot, but worshiping God can mean a variety of different things. And like, obviously, um, I don't love you um, by singing to you only. And thank God, like if that was the only way I loved you, like just singing to you, you'd be like, hey, um, we need like counseling and help. And <laughs> right. you, you need some like, I don't know, Ridlin or something, right? But um, no, I love you in a lot of different ways. Like how do I express my love for you? I mean, I serve you, I take care of you. I'm devoted to you exclusively, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. we like only share ourselves with each other. And like, uh, you know, in my mind, like I make sure that like I'm, I'm true to you, like even in my thoughts, right? Um, that's Those are different ways that I honor our marriage and our covenant. And uh, you know, obviously God is, is different, um, but similar. You know, and I think the way that I worship God is, you know, I devote myself to Him. I worship Him before and above, you know, anything or anyone else. Like even more than you, more than my kids. Um, obviously, you know, obviously my kids. But um, that's that's worshiping God. You know, I mean, that's right. it begins with that, and it's it's everything that I do. You know, I mean, it is uh, when I'm loving you. In part, I'm doing it because of the way that God taught me to love you. You know, I love right. you because of the way Jesus loved me. Um, or like when I'm writing a message, like I, I put everything I have into it, not because I want to preach a good message, not because I want our church to grow or I want people to be impressed with it. Like I do it first and foremost because God gave me that time and I want to give my very, very best to him, right? That's part of worshiping him. And I can do that um, even, I think even when like mowing the lawn, which is a task I hate doing, like I'm thanking God for this life. I'm praying for um, his children. I'm praying for um, his church. And in my heart, I just don't want to take that time and be ungrateful for it. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Worshiping God and everything. So, yeah. That's a great definition. So my question is, the first reason God put us on this earth was for us to get to know him mm -hmm. and to love him back. Mm -hmm. You touched on that. Like he yeah. loved us first. But how do we practically love him back? Man, uh, I think I think living out his purposes in every single context of our life is mm -hmm. one of the best ways that I can do that. And you know that we do this in our marriage, but like before, um, even when I before I pick up my kids from school, okay, like I will drive there in the car, and not all the time, but a large percentage of the time, I'll listen to my Bible, and before the kids get in the car, I'll just think what can I do to bring God's purpose into the way I am fathering my children, like in this car ride home, you know what I mean? Or on the way mm -hmm. to school every morning, like I want my kids to pray to God, like asking for a great day and surrendering and yielding their minds and hearts to him um, because I wanna bring his purpose in every moment, you know, or before we have people over for dinner, we just wanna pray for God's purpose to be in this moment because I think that's mm -hmm. that's part of worshiping him, you know, is, is saying every single moment is surrendered to you, you know, and even in our conversations, on our dates, like every moment, it's just, God, like, what does your purpose look like in this moment? Since we want to bring glory to you, what does bringing glory look like to you in this moment? And that's that's worship, you know? And it makes mm -hmm. every moment, even the mundane, meaningful, oh. you know? And I like mm -hmm. that. Like, I remember when, when we first got married or were dating, you were offended, or not offended, but I think you were intimidated by how intentional I wanted to make every part of our life, yeah. you know? And I would always ask, what is it? And you'd be like, can't we just hang out? And I'd be like, well, <laughs> No, <laughs> like I want to, I want to go. But now I would say you're more of a stickler for it than I am. Right. Right. Because you found the joy and pleasure in that. And I would mm -hmm. say to everybody watching, like you might be intimidated by some of the things we're talking about here. Like, oh, is it? But like, it's gonna make your life better. Right. Like, it really, really will. And I think you can vouch for that. Mm -hmm. You know, the longer we've been together, the more fun life becomes when every single moment has a mission that's worshiping God. Right. You know? And I think it gives you eyes to see him in the everyday moments. Oh yeah. It's inviting him in and I feel like 
you see him move in ways you never could if yeah. you're not inviting him in and having a purpose mm -hmm. in every situation in your life. Yep. I think that's, I think you're right on. And it's one mm -hmm. of my favorite parts. So talking about that, what do we gain by surrendering more of our life to God? So much. Uh, I think that living a God-given purpose is the pathway to the highest level of life satisfaction. Mm -hmm. You know, and in any situation, obviously, um, Paul in the Bible was this extremely robust man. Like, he went through really bad times, like imprisoned. He had plenty of food. He had too little food. He was shipwrecked, you know, flogged, whipped, flayed, you know, the whole nine yards. And he's able to say, it's all good. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I love God. In every situation, he's able to see. And I think that's part of what we gain, you know. And, I mean, I think from the outside, it might look like we, we live a charmed life or a really good life. And, and we do. Like, we've had a really blessed life. But we've been through hard times, too. And in the midst of all of it, like, it's so great to have a greater purpose yes. than enjoying this moment. You know what I mean? Like, when someone lashes out at us in the grocery store about, you know, various things and reasons, like... I have seen people like get really offended or if our kids get like an unfair call in a game or whatever, like I see parents losing their mind. And in my mind, I'm like, man, I exist for more than this. Like I exist for more than my joy in this moment or seeing my kids succeed. I gain a peace that surpasses, the Bible calls it a peace that surpasses understanding, but I gain a peace that surpasses every moment in this life, mm -hmm. no matter how good or bad it is. And I think that's a really special thing to have. Um, because, you know, I, lo I love my life. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. a pretty good place to be. That's a pretty big gain. And then the second thing you gain, the Bible talks about this, but it's treasure in heaven. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, eternal treasure in heaven. Right. Like, that's a big deal. You know, at the end of this life, everything gets put back in the box. Everybody dies, you know, and all their stuff is essentially lost, right? I remember when my grandparents mm -hmm. died, they had this beautiful, big, huge, you know, condominium that was like many thousand square feet full of luxury stuff. And pretty much we just sold it and put it all in a dumpster. You know, and it was just, it was crazy to see their life get rolled into a 30 yard roll off and realize like, wow, you know, like this treasure is all gone. But when you are living your life for God, you're storing up treasure in heaven that is eternal, that will never be taken away. And those are two really big benefits, I think, that come from, from worshiping God in this life. I agree. Mm -hmm. So you talked about Paul going through all these trials mm -hmm. and the purpose that God has given him, got him mm -hmm. through it. Would you mind sharing with us and the viewers who maybe don't know you a time in your life where it was really, really hard but God's purpose for your life and just brought you through it. Sure. I mean, okay. So I can remember a time in my life where I was doing my best at a church for God's glory. And there were a lot of things that, you know, obviously God will show us in heaven, but from my perspective, were genuinely unfair, like genuinely unreasonable day in and day out, being demeaned, and just lots of really bad, bad things. Um, and it was hard because every day I went home like discouraged, but I just remember thinking, I can't stand in the shadow of a bloodstained cross and say, because somebody didn't treat me fairly, then God is not good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it was kind of easy for me to read Jesus's, you know, gospels or to read about Paul's resilience and think, you know, today was a bad day. and. Somebody said that, you know, I'm not very good at what I do, even though I know that I've produced the best that I can. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it is pretty good. And I think there's like a number of different reasons why I was told I wasn't good. Um, but they don't define me. Jesus does. Right. And I'm going to keep serving with all my heart. And regardless of what happens, whether, you know, I lose my job unjustly or, you know, like I wash out of ministry because of being treated unfairly, like it just doesn't matter. It's okay mm -hmm. because I know that I can stand before God with a clean conscience and say, I gave it my very, very best. You know, and like, that's the kind of resilience that Paul has. And I think that I have gained when I'm at my best um, because of Jesus in my life, you know? And, and again, I see so many of us get like, absolutely, how many of us have had our day wrecked because of something that seemed unfair? Right. You know what I mean? And we serve a God who faced the greatest injustice of all time, the creator of the world being killed by his creation innocently. Mm -hmm. Like, that's crazy, you know? And when I serve Jesus, like I gained the ability to be an overcomer like he was rather than like a victim that is, you know, absolutely ruined over little things, mm -hmm. you know? And that's 2020, everybody's ruined over these little things. And like, I have gained so much when I'm at my best, not, not always, but so much when I'm at my best because of Jesus. You right. know, when people say all those things or do things or unfair, it's like, you know what, it's okay. And I'm not gonna let this ruin my day. Right. Yeah. So I feel like people are watching and listening and they hear that and mm -hmm. they want that. They want mm -hmm. the resilience of Paul. They want the resilience that you have. 
what is the game changer? What is the thought that helps you switch your mentality to not live for the unfair call, but live for Jesus's purpose? Is there something you say? Is there a Bible verse you say? Is there what is it that you do personally that you could share with us that we could learn? Well, I mean, I shared it in a sermon I preached recently, but I think Paul beginning in Romans 8, 28, all the way through the end, talking about how we're more than conquerors and how nothing in all creation, neither heights nor depth, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Just remembering like, and what he's saying there is, I have eternity to look forward to. Right. And so like the worst thing, the worst thing in this life, which he was facing an unjust death at the hands of Caesar, you know, in, in a horrible situation, like he said, I'm fine, mm -hmm. I'm good, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I believe that he ended up being crucified, you know? And he was like, that's okay. Right. Like, it, it's okay. Like, I love God, I have treasure in heaven, I'm okay. And obviously if Paul is able to be okay in that, like, what is my sadness? You know, somebody that I love said something mean about me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like somebody that I love and invested in, you know, like hurt me and, and it's okay. Like it's okay. So what I hear you saying is you say, they don't define you. Yeah. God defines me. Correct. Is that like, I feel like that yeah. is your go-to. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That That's is the go-to. So personally, this mm -hmm. is a personal question. Where do you feel closest to God? And how do you personally make worship a lifestyle? I mean, physically, I feel closest to God when sitting by a lake. Like, I mean, I've said that for years, but like I'm able to find peace and love and connection and like mm -hmm. quiet prayer time when I'm sitting by the water. But that's silly. Like I should be able to feel close to God anywhere. I think that I don't want to give that answer. Like I, I can only feel close to God by the lake. But I think, I think a better answer would be I feel closest to God when... I worship him above everything else in my life. Like, right. I mean, that that is obviously going to be the answer. When I when when I don't desire anything above him, like mm -hmm. when I desire anything, like love from you or earthly success or my kids to act well or like my finances to be in order, like I'm not going to feel very close to God, right? right. Because I'm loving these other things and th these things that won't satisfy ultimately, you know? Right. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you guys for tuning in. We want to leave you with a challenge and how you can live a more purpose-filled life. So we want to ask you this. What is one thing you will do this week to show God that you love him back? Or maybe for some of you, what is one way you could shift your mindset for living in the now or living for people and you could switch it to God's opinion is the only one that matters? We'd love for you to take this challenge and run with it. Thank you so much for tuning in. We had such a great week and we cannot wait to talk next time about friendship. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to follow us on our other social media platforms. We don't want you to miss out on any future content. Thank you so much again, guys. I hope you have a great day. And I want you to know I am personally praying that your roots stay strong.